Hi everyone, thanks for watching. In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at the digestive system, all of its organs and how they work together. And this will be an introduction to our nutrition course and in further lessons where we'll explore further topics on nutrition. But it's really important to understand the foundation of how our digestion works before continuing to learn further. So uh, with that in mind, let's begin. The process of digestion starts in the mouth. Now the mouth has several functions. Your teeth are used to break down the food into smaller parts so that they can be uh, digested more easily when they go further down along the digestive path. But that is not the only function of the mouth. In addition to breaking down the food into smaller particles, your uh, saliva contains its own digestive juice which is used to break down carbohydrates. And this is why when uh, we eat a piece of bread and we hold it in our mouth for some time, it'll become liquid and turn into paste. And this is these enzymes in action. Now, because there is no carb digesting enzymes in the stomach, it is really important uh, to chew the food carefully and to really take your time during this stage because it'll make it much easier um, for the rest of the digestive process to work if the food comes already broken down and rich with this enzyme juice in the saliva. And chewing the food longer will prevent some of that feeling of discomfort that we sometimes get after we eat a large meal or we eat a meal in a hurry. So once we chew the food, it will travel down um, a pipe that connects the stomach to the mouth, which is called the esophagus. And the food will then enter the stomach. Now the stomach produces two important substances, which are the hydrochloric acid and enzymes. And these are responsible for the digestion of proteins. When the protein reaches the stomach, uh, the digestion process can begin right away and this is because when you're chewing the protein the stomach already starts to prepare these juices so that the digestion can start right away. Now the order in which you eat your food is important too because different foods uh, take a different amount of time to leave the stomach. So liquids and fruits leave the stomach fairly quickly within a few minutes. Vegetables tend to take a little longer than starchy foods will um, require some more time. Proteins and fats take the longest to empty out of the stomach. And it is actually the fats that will uh, slow down the digestion the most. So this is why it's not a good idea to eat uh, a heavy uh, protein rich meal and then uh, have fruit for dessert because uh, those proteins will take maybe um, around three hours to empty out of the stomach and meanwhile uh, the fruit will be sitting there and waiting. So it's always a good idea to sequence your foods so that the ones that are more easily digested will leave the stomach first. Now right below the stomach is a very important organ called the pancreas. Now unlike other organs in the digestive system, um, nothing actually passes through the pancreas. And the job of the pancreas is to manufacture enzymes. And it manufactures three types of enzymes. Ones that work on proteins, fats and carbohydrates. So the pancreas is the only organ that is um, able to digest all three types of nutrients. In addition to making these enzymes, um, the pancreas has another very important function and that is the production of a hormone called insulin. And insulin we will discuss further um, in future lessons because it's a very important hormone that controls blood sugar levels in our body. Let's now take a closer look at the liver. So the liver is a very important organ 
uh, in the whole digestion process. It is the body's second largest organ. So only the skin is larger than the liver when we look at the size and the weight of our organs. The liver is uh, the central um, sort of warehouse that takes in all of the nutrients, processes them, and uh, then appropriates them into their uh, proper places. So once um, the nutrients are absorbed through the small intestine, nothing actually goes into our blood and into our cells directly. Instead, first everything needs to be channeled through the liver, where the liver will process all of the nutrients. Or sometimes it may store nutrients that can be released later when they are required by the body. So in addition to processing every single nutrient that um, enters the system, the liver is also responsible to, um, for pulling out all of the toxins that may be present in our food, such as food additives, colors, any artificial flavors, and things like that. The, filter ha the liver has to filter out so that they do not enter our bloodstream and they cannot harm us. In addition to all of this, the liver also plays a key role in the digestion of fats and it does so by manufacturing bile out of cholesterol. So once the liver manufactures this bile, it then becomes stored in the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores this bile until um, the food starts to enter the digestive system and reaches the small intestine, at which point the gallbladder will become stimulated to release its bile, which will help the digestion of fats. Now once in a while, um, these bile salts may crystallize in the gallbladder, forming gallstones, which can become a serious problem and we will discuss how to uh, prevent such problems from happening um, in some of the later lessons. Now, when the food uh, leaves the stomach, it um, goes through a valve into the small intestine. So the small intestine is actually the center point of the whole digestion process and this is because 90 percent of the nutrients that come with the food become absorbed in the small intestine so the small intestine gets the food from the stomach it then receives all of the enzymes produced in the pancreas and then it receives the bile from the gallbladder which will then um, help to continue to um, digest and process all of the nutrients to be channeled into the liver for processing. And once that process is complete, that actually concludes the process of digestion and absorption. So when the food leaves the small intestine and enters the colon or the large intestine, this is when the process of elimination starts. So at this point, all of the nutrients from the food uh, would have been absorbed through the small intestine and all that will remain um, is a semi-liquid mass that will contain mostly fibers, some water, and uh, some unabsorbed uh, food and uh, some uh, remaining nutrients. So as the food travels through the colon, the water will become absorbed from this mass and as it becomes more solid, it will be ready to be eliminated from the body. And that concludes the process of digestion and elimination. Again, this is a very quick overview and um, this system is actually a lot more complicated as we will see um, in future lessons where we study anatomy uh, in more detail. So thank you for watching this lesson. Um, really hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe for more nutrition learning videos coming out soon.